Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today let's talk about flanged pillows. What is a flanged pillow and how to make them? Let's start with what is a flanged pillow. A flanged pillow is a basic pillow that has this flat edge all the way around it. It can be an oval, it could be a circle, rectangular, square, it doesn't matter the size, it just has this flange all the way around it and it's not stuffed. They're very easy to make. But let's go through a couple here just to show you some ideas. This one here comes from a couch and I've just put buttons on both sides of it because my couch is brown so that it looks very cute on there. Children love these because they're able to hold on to these very easily and drag them around. This here was made with a decorative stitch on the sewing machine. Instead of a straight stitch all the way around, there's an actual decorative stitch here. Very easy to do. Most machines nowadays do have the decorative stitches. It gives you an excuse to use the stitches. And this one is a two-sided one. Leftover fabric also works great. And if you're fans of buttons, buttons also are very cute. And this flange is actually very big for such a small pillow. It doesn't matter how big you make your flange. It's going to be a personal preference for what you like. You can get all different sizes. And you can make them from many different things. This was made with upholstery fabric. And again, it's just a little flange on it. Different sizes. This here is just a little bit of fabric left over from a quilt that I have draped over a chair, so that's why I've used it up. And I've actually used coordinating thread here with a decorative stitch. And again, it just gives me a reason to use those stitches. And it just makes the pillow a little bit cuter, I think. Like I said, you can get them in all different sizes. Here is another one. It's very little, but again, I've done a big flange just because I kind of like the way it looked. And it's a double-sided one, and it also has the button on the back. Now you can get really small, and you can do a size like this, and it makes a great pin cushion. And it's kind of cute too. Then if you get really carried away, you can make an itsy bitsy teeny one. Why? I have no idea. But I love Snoop. The Snoopy character here is Woodstock. And I just thought he was so cute, so I had to make an itsy bitsy little teeny flanged pillow. Believe it or not, I do use it as a pin cushion right by my chair. That way I don't ever lose that little tiny needle that I'm using. So I've made this uh, baby quilt, and I had just a little bit of fabric left over. This is the size of fabric that I had left over. That's it. I had nothing else left over. So I am going to make a flanged pillow out of this so the little baby will be able to hold on to it and drag it around and love it. The size that I've chosen is the size of the fabric that I had left over. Like I said, there is going to be no pillow forms for this. This is very easy. You choose the size and you're going to be able to just stuff it. So you're going to need your front and you're going to need your back. They need to be both the same size. And what you're going to do is you're going to put the right sides together. Line them up and you are going to stitch all the way around and you're going to start a little bit into this corner so that you're going to stitch around here and you're going to go all the way around and you're going to come up to here. So you're stitching all four corners but you're going to leave a little opening in one edge. And that opening just needs to be big enough so that you can put your hand in because you will need to turn this right side out. So let's get this to the machine and just sew a quarter inch all the way around and then we'll see what we need to do next. So you can see here, I've just backstitched at both of these areas and I've gone all the way around in one continuous line. The next stage is you're going to snip off these corners. Do not go into your stitching line. You just need to snip off all four corners. From the tiniest little one to the biggest one, this is where it's going to happen and it's going to make it easy. You will need to press this seam right open onto itself. 
both with the front fabric and the back fabric. We have all of the seams folded into themselves, the front and the back, all the way around, even the seam here where you are going to put your hand. You need to put that pretend seam there, just as if you had had that stitching there. And it will be easier to stitch in the long run. Doing this is going to make the edges very straight. Now just put your hand inside, turn it inside out, and let's poke the edges out and see what we have. It's all pressed nice and flat. The corners have been poked out. We still have our opening here. Now we need to decide where are we going to put our flange and how big is it going to be. That is a personal preference. I like to go about an inch and a half. If you start with that, it sort of gives you a good guideline, even when the lines are drawn, if you want to go bigger or smaller. Now there are a lot of different things you can mark with. You have markers that come out in water, markers that just come out with friction, and some that will just brush off. But if you don't want to use any of these, you can use your good old fashioned tape because this will come off afterwards. So what we're going to do is mark. I recommend marking the back and that way there's no chance of you seeing your, your marking line in the front. So the first thing we need to do is do a line all the way around in the center of the measurement we're going to want. For this one, I am going to do an inch and a half. So I'm going to take and I'm going to mark an inch and a half all the way around. So this is the wrong side and we have it marked at an inch and a half all the way around. I've put pins here right where my opening is so I don't accidentally sew over this. Now the stitching you're going to do is start in the one corner here and you're going to stitch all the way around to this corner stopping here. Now that's just the prettiest little stitch. That's the back and that's the front. Now we are at the stuffing stage. Take out your pins and you're going to be able to stuff this inside with the batting that you want. Make sure when you take the batting that you get it all the way into these two corners. Now I know this is as much stuffing as I want and how much did I add? Really again it's a personal preference. But what I need to do is I need to stitch along here and this batting is going to be in the way. So you just need to push it out of the way. Line the edge up just where you're going to have your hand stitching and move that batting right out of the way. Give it a good push, it will go out of the way. Straighten your pillow up and you're going to put just a couple of pins in here to hold the batting into this side. Now as you can see, because the batting's been pinned out of the way, I have a nice flat surface here to work with. So I'm just going to sew all the way down here, just as I did around the first time. So I've done my stitching there, take out the pins and push the batting back to where it belongs. If you use the 100% polyester uh, stuffing, it's really, really easy to get it back into the corner of the pillows. Um, if you use the chip foam, it's a little bit more difficult to do, but this is just fluffy like air. And you're just going to be able to go like this, and it's actually going to work itself right into its own corner. So the last thing you're going to need to do is just close this stitch with some hand stitching, and you're done. And this is with polyester, you're going to be able to throw it in the wash machine and the dryer so it will stay nice and clean for the little one to grab this and carry around. So now we have a matching pillow with the quilt. You can't get much better than that. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and as always, feel free to come back, subscribe and join me again and let's see what we're sewing next time in my sewing room. Bye for now.